Okay, so today we talked about the center of mass, and we played some tricks on each other about picking chairs up and trying to touch your toes with your butt against the wall, and it didn't work. So just to review, um, the center of mass is this point that we use in physics. Basically, we say that the center of mass uh, of anything, oops, sorry, uh, in this case, this is a, a sledgehammer here, uh, the center of mass is the point that moves as if all of this mass were concentrated at the center of mass and all external forces like if you if you push on this from the right we pretend that all the forces you exert are you're exerting on the center of mass so it doesn't really matter if i push like on this end or on this end we kind of pretend that no matter what i'm pushing on the center of mass so let's talk about where the center of mass is. I like to think of the center of mass as like an average of the masses. This is, this is going to get a little weird, so uh, sorry. Um, so for instance, an, oh yeah, and not just an average, but a weighted average. So for instance, I know that most things, their center of mass is kind of in the middle, okay? Because the mass on the left of the middle kind of averages out with the mass on the right. You can kind of think of the mass on the left side being like negative mass. Really, it's the mass times a negative position. And then that averages out with mass on the positive side. So it's like mass times a positive position. But then you have objects like this where the middle would be like, uh, I don't know, here-ish? Okay. The middle would be here, but that's not where the center of mass is because there's more mass over here. So if this was a nice, I don't know, I don't know, a stick, I, yeah, something nice and symmetrical, um, the stuff on the right would average out the stuff on the left, and you end up with it at the middle, which is zero. But this is a weighted average. There is more mass over here, so it counts more over here. So the center of mass is going to get kind of pulled to the right. It's probably somewhere like here-ish. Okay? Now, something like here-ish is not really a good physical term. Okay? Something like here-ish. That is not, like, that's not quali- that's, that's qualitative. <laughs> Sorry. I just think that's a funny thing for me to say. Uh, it's late. It's the first day back from break. We're all sleep deprived. Okay. The, that's not good enough. Okay. That, that's not good enough for us. We need to be able to find the weighted average of this mass with a number. I want an x coordinate for that. Okay. What position is this from, if this is zero, is this like x equals positive two centimeters or something? I don't know. Let's find out. So we're going to start with something called a system of particles. Okay. Oh, that sounds kind of crazy. Am I scaring you yet? All right. All that means is we're going to have more than one particle. That's all that means. Okay. So particle just means a, a thing that's sitting there. So let's take we're going to take particle number one and particle number two. Okay. And I want to know where their center of mass is. Now, if they have the same mass, I'm going to call it, this is not only particle two, but it has a mass of mass number two, and this has a mass of mass number one. Okay. If these are the same mass, their center of mass should be smack dab in the middle. You're taking a nice, weighted average where the weight is the same on both sides. So you just get a nice straight up average. But if they're not the same, it's going to pull the center of mass right or left. Now, um, the way that we find the position, well, first off, I need to know where these particles are. So I'm going to say this is at x coordinate number one, and this is at x coordinate number two, where the uh, I'm saying they're like on a number line. Okay, so I don't know, maybe 
yeah, this is, so this is x, and let's say that was 0 or something. It doesn't really matter where 0 is, but um, this is an, a number line of x. So it's just like, I'm only dealing with one dimension. I could do two dimensions. I could do, you know, and y. I'm not going to right now, however. I could do y in the vertical direction, and I'd do the same thing. Like, I would find what the y coordinate was for each one. Okay, now I keep saying I keep saying weighted average. So I want you to think about how do you find the average of anything. Okay, um, I really really hope that I wouldn't really need to say this, but let's say you're going to average something. You generally take some value a and some value b. You add them. And then you divide by how many things you added up, right? So this would I, this would give me the average of a and b. I'd add a and b together. I'd divide by how many things I added together. Okay, we're gonna do the same sort of thing, but it's a weighted average, remember? So I'm trying to find where something is. Okay. So I'm basically trying to find like where what what the x coordinates are. So I'm going to do like x1 plus x2. I'm going to average them. But to make them a weighted average, I'm going to weight x1 with the mass of m1, okay? So instead of just adding x1 plus x2, I'm going to do the mass of number 1 times its coordinate plus the mass of number 2 times its coordinate to weight them. But then I've got this problem of what do I divide by? Um, what I'm going to divide by is the total mass, okay, because, and the total mass being add up the two masses, that's how much mass I have, okay. So it's probably better to think of it as I'm finding the average of the mass, because that's, I mean, that's what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find the point where all the mass, we could pretend it's all in the middle, or the center of mass. Um, but I'm weighting it by where the mass is. So instead of just m1 plus m2 divided by all the mass I had, okay, it's like a plus b divided by all the numbers I had, I'm weighting m1 with where that m1 exists, plus I'm weighting m2 by where that x2 exists. Okay, so if I do this, what that will give me, it will give me the position, remember x means position, of the center of mass. We usually write it like this, the position of the center of mass mass. C-O-M. Okay, this is not x.com or something. That is probably a pornography site. Um, I wouldn't know. Don't look it up. Anyway, it's center of mass. Okay, now if you had more than one particle, let's say we had three, Ooh. what do you think we would do? Well, I would just add in the mass of that third thing plus the position of that third thing, and in the bottom, again, just adding up all the mass. There's a mathematical way to say this. It's when you keep adding things until you're done with having things. That sounds really stupid. I'm sorry. Um, so the position of the center of mass of a bunch of particles is what you get when you add up all the particles times their positions and divide by the total mass. Um, so that is divided by total mass. Notice this is a capital M. We tend to use capital letters for totals. Okay, so that's total mass. And then we do oh, sigma. Some of you are probably groaning right now. I love sigma. Where you just add up from, uh, from 1 to n, wherever you want to go to, however how you want to go, of the mass of a particle times its position. Okay, so if you don't, if you're not familiar with this, what that basically means is you're adding up m1 plus m1x1 plus m2x2 plus m3x3, and you just keep doing that until you run out of stuff to add, and then you divide by m, big M, all the mass together which is the total mass of all your particles, okay? So this is kind of the written out sigma version, and this is the version of, like, the nice mathy version. Meh. Okay. Let's see, how much time do we have? That's 10 minutes. I'm going to stop this video, and I'm going to make another one where we do an example.